fire, what are you saying? Yes, fire key. Life is great, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we, we are here again. <laughs> we are here again, Ballhead and the Dread Podcast. want to say give thanks for everyone been tuning in from those times till now. Also, I do have to remind you, make sure you support the bridge in here. Our Turkey, a.k.a. the Dread, has a blazing EP there, disrupting the status quo. Link in the description. Also, his latest music video, Freedom in Africa. Do remember, look out for the short documentary, Mesh Marina, uh, history of the Mesh Marina, Jamaica's most famous apparel, most famous shirt. And uh, that's pretty much it. Make sure also you check us out at ConsciousTea.com. Yes, we are spinning every Sunday on WLOI.org, playing Roots Rock, Reggae Music, Lovers Rock, Rock Steady. Far Eye, what we're reasoning about today? Yes, I, I look out for that documentary vibration at you know, I love, love the trailer to you, know, but <laughs> yes, I... <laughs> Well, you know, today we are reason about colonialism. But we notice colonialism in a in a in a football. For the way that well in America them call it soccer, soccer, but <laughs> in the wider world it's a football still. So we see we see, we see a go in the FIFA World Cup now. We see a whole heap of colonialism a take place and we see that a dominate the whole thing. So we really want to break down the spectrum of, of what take place in a football at the moment and even at the wider world too. We know it affects more than one sport, but this is the Prime time now, we will see the FIFA World Cup take place, and it really has showcased itself. So, that we really want to dig in at, you know? And for and, people... Oh, sorry, for No, got you, got you, man. No, I was saying, for people unfamiliar with the population of Africans and Europeans, I found this wonderful list here. I'll just read it off for you. Senegal uh, has 62 players, Senegalese uh, professional football players who are playing in Europe. Morocco has 56, Nigeria has 54, Ivory Coast has 50, Ghana has 46, Algeria has 32, Mali has 32, Cameroon has 28, uh, Congo has 23, and Guinea has 13. That's a holy but <laughs> We're just dealing with Africa fire. We're not dealing with people from Caribbean, Brazil, who I want to speak about later. We're just dealing with African professional football players who are... Um, uh, European teams are utilizing their talents and benefit from their talents. We always speak about brain drain, and this seems to be a humongous talent drain. And we want to talk about the impl implications that this creates on uh in the whole football world. Well, the first thing when we really there mention mention talent drain, and the part they really want to focus on, right? Because with the talent drain are going all across the sport itself, where where any you to want to develop. Them I forgot to Europe to get the development where them need. For instance, Jamaica have a wonder kid right now. Um, him called Dujan Whisper Richards. And the whole question is spark a whole outrage and a whole debate. The way I'm a perform, they must say, okay, all right, Jamaica can't contain him. Jamaica can't contain him. So them, them everybody, everybody a hope for a European side see him and actually him go trials and all of these things and actually make it out from a European perspective so he can come back and represent the nation. So I said to myself, say, this is kind of crazy when you think about it in a fire because if, if this youth become a wonder kid, I, and I, I see him because I watch the sport, I'm a see him and I said to myself, say, so he must go to Europe so that, and, and nobody in the country no feel away for no say, boy, we, oh, we have to develop our talent in a Europe. Why, what about our academy? And what about our, our farmer institutions then we can develop a youth? It shows so we don't have no farmer institution we can develop a youth. And we have to look forward to Europe for, for, for be the savior again. And at that, at that really are the, are the main problem in and so comes them drain with talent because them are the main thing. When everybody watch a football match, um take international out them have to watch an English Premier League. Uh, remember the main top leagues them in the world now uh, regarding to football, English Premier League, La Liga, which is Spanish. Our German Bundesliga, our League One, which is France, our our Dutch league. So you see all of these places, you realize all of these places we have the top football academies in the world now. So when you check it out now, the youths them from 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 these nations, where them are classified as developing nations, our people call them third world. Them now have to really head towards that now for even get one farmer exposure. So it made them feel like said the ultimate place to be and the ultimate people who can actually access technology because technology them are used for, for and are classified as the development you know, because most of these academies in a sport it's based on the technology where determine how big them is so technology 
finance if they have the money can get all of these sports sports sporting players around the world together around the world together so them can benefit collectively so it's like it's like it to me it's like the same type of chat the slavery vibration where a man pull pull a slave from over Senegal him take a man from over Ghana and him take a man from over here so all for build theme empire and then it's like the European empire just go up and up and where you ask individual people now so where you think the youth for go Everybody I tell you straight, say, oh, are you up him for going for left Jamaica alone because, because Jamaica can't do nothing for him. And in fact, and the, you know the sad part about it? Normally, me as a politically conscious person would have, would, have, would have fight against the type of talk there. But you know the reality about it? The reality is that him can't develop nowhere in nowhere Jamaica because Jamaica or Jamaica now have the facility for maintain him or, or, or treat treat him him, him him weakness them for make sure say him weakness. For example, say him can't dribble as much or just an example. Jamaica now have the, the facility or the the, the, the the opportunities them for make him strive. So it it it's it very ludicrous to me how come we not see ourselves as 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 that good enough. Our winners of ourselves as that great in technology. And also, it shows say we lack of finances too. As a nation, we don't have no form of development for ourselves. So it starts from this even before you go international, you know, because into the international ball game where we see and the spectrum where we see upon the international forefront who are represent each nation. It comes from the camp them where them did they now. And because most of them move go to Europe now for the opportunity. That's when now them start looking and see themselves now as European for the most part. And I guess so the problem start 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 coming to play for you. And it start become become one entangled whole thing where yes, let's worship Europe, the place where our youth can build, our youth can grow, and then uh, that type of concept. And the next part of it is that well, a lot of people probably don't understand is a youth in a Europe who live in a Europe I already have access to certain things. Them don't have to wait till the age of 18 for join an academy and things like that. But you see youth coming from places like Jamaica and some parts of Africa and thing, in regards to the work permit and all of the clarifications them with them need, them can't do that until the age of 18. So then the opportunities what them get is even less. And that's why you see enough of them now start, start trying to approach the European market even before the age of 18, and I try something off that farm, and then once them reach you know, you see it starts spill over into the whole international market, and as so comes now, them start to have to represent the nation. Them see, so how crazy the whole thing be. We are looking on the sport where we like and thing, you know, but beyond the sport where we are looking for the entertainment part of it, you know, the colonialism really I take place, and nobody now really, really meditated from the aspect of the fire, and it really has shown our weakness as, as, as black people. I show we unification, it assures so we don't have no development amongst ourselves fire. And it's really, really sad for no say a Europe we look forward to for develop our talents. Our talents we look forward to Europe for develop. And that can real pan no farm a forefront fire. For no say that is a reality. So when time we see a wonder kid now, like as I mentioned, do John Whisper Morrison. Sorry, wish wish by Richards. I see the wonder kid and we say, yo, they kid the great in you know, play in play like nobody else who so ever see at that level, you know. Yeah, we have to send him go to Europe because we want we want better fame and we want good fame. So Europe we have to go. And that 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 become a sad reality now. We take over every single talent where we have and them aspire for go to Europe. Because locally, them now get for strive. So how that make we look as a people and how that make we look as a nation. But far right. You touched on a lot of great topics, but I'm shocked that you said that uh your shock that was taking place because it's no difference, right? Say, for instance, now, the player is a natural resource, right? A valuable natural resource we, which we extract from the colony and take back to the mother country. That's the same thing with the player. Now, in regards to the whole mind frame, we know already we had this conversation in regards to white validation in all aspects of everything. You could be great at what you do, but if it's not validated by white people, then you're kind of mediocre. So you have players now within themselves saying, I need to prove myself on a higher market and a bigger market and generate more money. Then we have to factor in the finances and lack of vision and lack of investment. You have a place like Jamaica that generates all this talent for track, uh, football, soccer, whatever you want to call it, and even reggae. There are no infrastructure or facilities or programs to nurture this talent. So if it doesn't exist, what do you expect a man to sit down there and do? Is suffer? It's kind of unrealistic in a sense that, you know, um, because I want to be clear, the player shouldn't be chastised 
for their actions because they're doing what's beneficial for them, what's beneficial for their family. But collectively, it's destructive, especially to the psyche, because it's a nasty cycle now where you keep seeing people uh, viewing the European country as the highest, as the pinnacle of everything, when it really doesn't have to be the case if the country were to invest. Now, I am aware of their, uh, we're, we're speaking about Jamaica in this case, their dependence on IMF and World Bank for certain monies. And I'm pretty sure there's no stipulation in regards to developing athletics. And it probably would make sense. And if I was a European country, I would make sure they didn't get any money to develop uh, a talent or a niche that they have to make sure that I would uh, benefit it. I would benefit from it more than them. Uh, there's a cool article here in New York Times. Let me pull it up so you guys know. It states that uh, it came out in November. Say, uh, at this World Cup, nationally is a fluid concept, right? Uh, they speak about the, the a gentleman from Cameroon. He was a great soccer player. Now he's the president of uh, Cameroon's uh, uh, soccer federation. But he was running around trying to get people to come back. I found in particular this, uh, some guys, Williams. I guess they grew up in Spain. One went back to Ghana. The other one stayed there. So there are players with that consciousness. And he has a great quote stating that, like, he really wants to represent Ghana. So everyone's not fully gone, right? And those who are, I don't want to say fully gone, but everyone aren't, does not have that mind frame. And those who don't have that mind frame, to a certain extent, I can't knock them because they're at their professional athletes, they're not political activists, you know? So they may, for whatever reason, usually it's monetary or some type of uh, long term benefit they think they're going to get to say, well, I would pay, if I was, I was born in uh, Congo, right? That would be a, a French vibe. I would just play for France instead of Congo, even though Congo's participate, you know? And like, but this this, this, this is a great, I'm glad you picked this topic because this is a great um, view or insight in regards to how neocolonialism still has their hand in different things that we're unaware of. You see it in all sports. You see it in industries, Right. Um, Jamaica. Jamaica produces, regardless of the uh, attention on violence and negative things, Jamaica has hundreds of thousands of brilliant people. But the way the economy is set and the way the opportunities are, they're not going to sit. You may have some like a sister, like a sister be or somebody that's going to say and rough it out. But the, the average person just going to jump ship and make money in U.S., Canada or European country. And the fact that they're able to go there and sell so much shows the heights of their capabilities. Because we all know that when the Jamaica touchdown somewhere, fire, whether good or bad, they're going to do it to the heights. <laughs> you know, whether good or bad, they're going to excel. But back to the whole soccer vibe, man, it's just a situation where capital, right? Who has the capital? That capital could really draw somebody out. And also the whole prestige and the mind frame. You know, it's like... um why would I sit in Brazil and play in this league, even though it's a great thing where I can go to Europe? But we know some have done it. Or why would I stay in Jamaica and I don't have a proper facility? I saw an interview with a guy, Le Leon Bailey. Um, he was looking out against the JFF in regards to uh, what they were doing and just not being uh, professional and that type of vibe. So it is what it is. We have failed, right? We have failed. Not all countries, because some countries are... Um, put money into the development of talents that can benefit the country. But Jamaica, we're saying, right? I don't know what they're doing with their money. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing with their money. But they're definitely not putting money into athletics to keep the talent there. It's the same thing with reggae. It's the same exact thing with reggae. And I won't bring reggae into the mix, but I have to because what what does the country do to nurture, to preserve, to develop reggae talent? Zero. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Zero. And if they do keep it short, they keep the same artists for the last 30 years, been headlining Sizzla, Barris, Freddie McGregor, and somebody else or some dancer artists. But it's a total neglect of the younger talent. So if a man jumps ship now and leave and goes somewhere else or decides not to do reggae, Right. Because remember, that's the next part we're not speaking about. We have a lot of artists who are jumping ship and deciding not to do reggae because they don't see any benefit of it. And if they were to do the reggae, that would benefit them and also the country and the brand. There's no there's no there's there's nothing near fire, even with the whole pandemic, how they was dealing with reggae artists. I thought it was totally right, because even in England, I heard they were giving artists and certain things, certain money to survive and keep moving. You got big name artists that draw crowds in Jamaica and they're not giving them a dollar. They sitting there suffering. That's not right. 
So the countries that failed that we have to we have to understand the exploitation of the uh the mother country. But the colony, even though the, the the colony is governed by the mother country and they have the mother country mind frame, they are just as guilty as them because they have done nothing to prevent the drain of talent or the brain drain, you know? Yeah, it sure said it sure said leaders them are puppets still because it sure said them not really want nothing good for them them place. I read. So, so like all even Jamaica, since we use it as an example, you're not even have a one academy. Not even one academy for develop the youth them. Like we realize that you have you have an elder called Craig Butler who, who say have an academy called Phoenix Academy. The only academy where we can say, where we can say, all right, they're they not help develop some youth. Leon Bailey, as we mentioned, come through the academy there. The youth may talk about um a while ago too, as an example, he might come through that. But it's not an academy in terms of there's a physical location and the youth them have, have certain places to go. While in Europe, you know you have all of these clubs, major clubs are within Europe, they are academy too. So them, them have them have channels where them send you through school, make sure so them and the training piece straight through, develop them straight until them venture after other teams or them become a player for the senior teams and be, and develop a full blown career and them have an industry on it or bought by the government. And that, that me no want enough people forget you know. English Premier League. La Liga, all of these things are backed by the government because FIFA is an organization where FIFA is not just a, a not just a football nation. I want a football organization. I want people to understand that FIFA is one of the most powerful government governmental bodies that exists. You know, it might be listed as a non-profit or whatever it is, but FIFA is a powerful organization with a lot of political connections. And if you realize where all of the leaders them come from, them venture from all over Europe. So it's not not, not no. It's not not we just know. Some more people start look upon them things and realize say this thing is all political. Even if we don't want to think about it political, it's very, very political. So now if we move forward to the current World Cup where I take place right now, I show people it's not just youths where where did it come from, come from probably some Caribbean or country or African nation or whatever. And it's only for black youths are actually born upon the upon the continent of Europe, where them whole parents, parents have an ancestry we, we, we lead further than Europe, way far by Europe. And now them become the face of the European nation. And because these youths become the face of the European nation now, they make the European nation better. Because if you think about some of the best football team them out there right now, I really a black people I drive them fully. And so I said to myself, say, well on the me them I talk about Frenchman and I look up on my TV. I mean I say, wait. Frenchman? So it's I find it strange for call a black man a Frenchman. Because in my meditation, no, I don't see it the way they So you have, to, you have France, you have Mbappe, you have a whole team, you have Germany, you have all of them, Musiala, you have like every single team you can think about, the representation or the face of it is, is, is a black man for the most part. And it will drive the nation. Them. You even have countries like Netherlands where, where, where you see Gakpo and Wally for them, you have Van Dijk and all of them. So I assure you that the representation of Africans is all about. And if you really chase but them roots you gotta say to yourself say, but what just imagine if them a man did represent the, the, the our nation or represent one of the african nation them are the, them country of origin how great this country would be as well as we are saying we know the downfall in regards to there is no infrastructure there but may i try to show it show it even the people them from the next end say what if we actually develop our nation we become superpower. But now I tell you, say we must focus on only sport or entertainment. Because we know sport and entertainment is a thing where it kind of drag the youth them wide in terms of feeling like that is the only possibility. But the reality is that sport and entertainment have a lot to do with the development of a nation based on how the people them consume it. So imagine now if we have some, some development and some academy and see how the representation would have shift fire. Because the funny, the funny part about it, you know, what me see is that a lot of people Black people, um, for them favorite teams, a European nation. And when me sit down and sit down to myself, me I said, but me can't carry because me can't couldn't see France or play or Senegal and say, oh, go, 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 France. No, me can't say go, France. It's like, it's like me I said, all right, go colonization. I saw me see it, you know, because everything political to me you now, and people always say, then why everything after so political is just sport? No, but me can't do it because my favorite team. At one given time was Argentina, you know, but then when I realized eh, Argentina don't have the same political identity as me, so I can't have Argentina as my team. So the way or, or me look upon it, if me a pre sports, every African nation is that me a cheer for first. But when I say a black man now, every time I say black, me a talk about black man who come from Jamaica and Trinidad and all of these different places, 
So the man them with all this jersey and this flag, I wave the flag eye. So me I said to myself, so then how come black people are wave all England flag eye? So or black people are wave all Dutch flag eye? So or black people are wave all France flag eye? So and Germany, me, me literally see a forty-five seconds video where a black man have on a, from Jamaica have on a German jersey and crying tears, a big tough grown grown man crying tears, and I said, I'm, I'm, I talk like a baby, you know, and I said, oh, them can't believe them fight up my side, but Germany for life, so I said to myself, so how comes a black man, they, how come the same people them can't identify with Africa, and if you call a man African, African, it's like a, the worst thing you can call him, because he said, boy, you put, you put all sort of stigma upon him, because of Africa, you call him African, but when it comes to the representation of Europe, Everybody is so proud in the identity of what Europe symbolizes and want to be a part of Europe. And this, so it becomes the, the fascinating thing in a fire. Because if you look on all of the side, them we really go through, go through, you realize it. But after a time, you start looking to it even from the next angle, and I say, oh, so the people, them not really, the people, them only want to see the entertainment. You know? But guess what? The most of the youth, them. We actually do the entertainment. Them depend on the European side, even though them black. So it's the people them get the joy out of the entertainment, not out of the political consciousness, you know. So the entertainment not really as way them for represent a European nation, but but them not think on the panel level. So now we actually break it down and show the people them say you're supposed to even not think about it from the levels there. Yes, yeah, so I said, I'm not stop your entertainment. Yes, you don't want to see France go through, and you don't want to see Netherlands go through because you want to see this type, fancy type of ball game where, where, where you like. And I realize yeah, that's why the people bring them, because we get for over the majority of people is not politically conscious. I can't not that or try to beat it in them heads, boy, be politically conscious 24 7. But when you get to realize the representation of all of these teams for you, and how highly, like, the prop, the, think about it, just France again. They'll dwell upon friends again for you. Majority of the footballers, them on this side, may I talk about more than 70 to 30 percent are black. And these are the main, main stars. You talk about Saliba, defense, and anybody you want to think about who I carry the weight or carry the swing and all of these things are Africans when you trace back them roots. If you look by England, but the man them show me a statistics and I said, boy, one of the time them majority, had, had, uh, sorry, so enough of the youth them where I play for y'all England, the eligible for play for y'all Jamaica too. So think about it, Raheem Sterling, Raheem Sterling who, who, who born and grew in Jamaica and play for England. Imagine if these youths could have represent, represent, represent Jamaica. It would have been a beautiful thing because these youths are superstar on an international level. And but the, but my seat now, as we said, the Leon Bailey thing with the JFF thing is where last time me checked the, the players them for Jamaica, three paycheck behind. So think about it now. I'm on a player for England where he probably come off of the ball field. Him agent or whoever, if him account and them can see for them food funds coming out of them account. I'm on a play for Jamaica internationally up to date now, him three paycheck behind. So, so it, 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 it's like, oh, oh I'm going to go off and be a part of the organization. De. So, me, while me have the political consciousness, I'm say, all right, we can't believe that this is going on. Black people are support European nation. I still have to wonder why them do it. And now I kind of see the full scope. When I start to come down to earth now, I start to see the full scope of why them support because when they realize it's not a political conscious ideal I, I, I thing, you know? It's just an entertainment thing and them want to see the entertainment. And entertainment I got most to come from Europe because at Europe, the academy them there, Europe, the scouts them there, at Europe, the money there, at Europe, the most, the most important part even beyond all of that is Europe, the technology there. Because a man can't say, boy, he might play football, he might have a VAR, which is a virtual assistant referee. He might have a VAR, he might have technology where he can develop all of them things. They say, the part them really say, you want to our nation. How come our nation can do it? And you see, they talk about Brazil. And I want to tell you say, something special about Brazil too, where, 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 where we must even identify. And this is very, very important too, because Brazil outside of Africa, Brazil have the most African population outside of Africa. And that's very important to note because the, the most fascinating football nation in history who produce football where even scientists try to study and can't understand how could them man develop so much different ball. <laughs> scientists, you know, for you, like literally try experiment that in a, and I try to understand how. We don't realize that Africans talented beyond, beyond the levels where, where we're not even understand. So we know in ourselves if we start digging and say, oh, we are going to do the thing. It, it, it even reminds me of this FIFA World Cup reminds me of coronavirus in a fire. You know why? 
the the the, the where them come the vaccine thing where them come with. Me not me not in the vaccine business, but me I say when time the vaccine thing I go around the Caribbean, the Caribbean Jamaica and the Caribbean never even have one trial that them could do because they could not fund a vaccine. So I mean, I said, how could you have a whole Caribbean where supposedly have this CARICOM? What is the representation of CARICOM that you can't even fund a vaccine? That's how much we're in poverty and that's how we are live underdeveloped and that's how much we are give out to Europe. I wait for Europe to save we. I wait for US to save we. I wait for the broader colonial world to save we from everything. So from sports, we are wait for them to save we. We entertainment, we are wait for them to save we. We health, we are wait for them to save we. For food, we are wait for them to save we. You so crazy at me for you? <laughs> no, it's a serious thing. And why they waiting for them to save them? They the ones profiting. <laughs> All right, one last thing I want to touch on, a topic that this highlights is the next generation in regards to um, people being born in the, in the diaspora, right? I've noticed that the patriotism, <laughs> the patriotism for those born in uh, America or Europe or any other country is very tricky. You have some that really embrace the country and the culture of their parents, and you have a lot who push it away, who have great disdain and shame in it. And one thing I've noticed, especially for people who are highly successful, especially at a young age, due to assimilation and their social surroundings, those are the ones that tend to let it go, right? Because the environment that they're in doesn't have room for that culture. Uh, they may do it in a way, in a little frivolous way, for little jokes and this and that, or something that's exotic. But to really embrace the culture and practice it on a daily basis, the the, the uh, ecosystem that they're around uh, doesn't allow to it. I just wanted to add that on in regards to why a lot of these people who are, say, born in Spain or born in France and their parents are from somewhere else, when they truly embrace that European culture, because I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it with my own family members where they don't. They don't really want nothing to do with that too tough. You know, they want the full culture of what they are and they kind of leave that to the parents, you know? So we, as uh, parents have to do a good job to make sure the children get the culture. Yes, they're born here, but they have to get the culture and get the exposure to the whole aspect of the Jamaican vibe, the African vibe, you know? Something with, something with, let me just, let me just recall something, right? So I'm watch a, I'm watch an interview, uh, a documentary of recent about a baller called um, Pierre, Pierre Aubameyang, right? So he born in a France, he born in a France, and him, him play for Gabon. He was the captain for Gabon national team, seen Gabon in Africa. Aubameyang is like one of the top, top players in, in the world, like a top, top player in the world for him. He played for Paris at Dortmund in Germany, come play for Arsenal in England, now he play for Chelsea in England. And you know, say, when you see a baller like that, the man make a sacrifice because he could have easily played for France because he made a superstar. But because his father, his father is a coach for Gabon and his father used to play for Gabon. So the identity where his father keep with him, even though he born and grew up and raised in France, he grew up as a Gabonese. Yes, what I say? He have the African roots there. So he going to represent Africa. But two ways for take it, you know, because enough people, that, that was a real controversial thing. Enough people did so surprise him go play for Gabon. My head said the man is a Gabonese, even though he's born in France. It's so controversial because on one side, people are say, then why Obama young him no want nothing for himself? Like, like oh, him, oh, him go represent Gabon. Gabon of all places, like, him could have easily win World Cup with France, um, well, four years ago, what, 20, 20, 2018, because he would have inner the side he would, have be, he would have to get a start on the side being a superstar in the world at him prime. But he choose to represent Gabon. And then we are thinking on the other side you now, people are saying, yeah, he become like a hero in the country, right? But then it come with sacrifices. So the part that you know, I really want to ex expound on too, it come with sacrifices because you have some man who decides say, for the greater good, you will go down. I really want to represent a nation and show the nation. I said, them, them, you're not a nobody, you're somebody. You see me, I say, you can do it too. But then he come with the sacrifice where he have to miss out on the World Cup because him team now qualify for World Cup because the quality of players them where him a play with play with compared to where him used to a play with in a Europe it's extremely lower so them now go overstand them can go read the game with him all of these things now him have to try pep them up and give them motivation and boost them to do it so sometimes even as as the athlete them and 
and the people who are dealing with it for some time have to have the mindset there too. Because I realize that there's no consciousness within the people who even have played to because a man no one go make no sacrifice. Because a man no one tell himself a boy, oh, World Cup, I go on a World Cup, I miss me. No one watch a World Cup on a TV, you know. But me I watch a World Cup on TV if I want to make sure same day a Qatar or play football and thing. But you see, you like them there, I have to really highlight you like them there too. Wait, 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 even though say, yo. Them go represent a Gabon, Gabon because him want to see Gabon strive and him really believe in the, in the whole thing. He never get to bring them to a World Cup as I show you after the, the quality of what the football they play in a Europe compared to where they play anywhere else is a total different quality because it's like a melting pot. You see what I say? But it's the sacrifice where enough of the man them have to overstand so you can make some sacrifice. Even the same Leon Bailey we are talking about, him never have to play for Jamaica. Jamaica because they travel to Europe and could have find some connection for go play the European team. But him even I show him show you say, you know, say, me go play for Jamaica same way and represent my nation, even though my nation has developed a certain way. And even though JFF is an organization where have all heap of corruption in it and things too. Man still have to represent them nation. And sometimes we have to overstand say if we really want to see a change, some of the ball of them and some of the people them, and them would have to have a consciousness and know say, no say. We are going to take a risk. We are represent the nation and be the first to lead it out. But sometimes no man really want to lead out no course because I realize eh, we talk about this accountability thing and it, it really go across the board, you know. Because nobody no want to be accountable for say, all right, and we did represent the nation and this never did go on good, but let's come again and let's do that. Because sometimes it take even one man in the spotlight to show them a man say, oh, wait, Abama Yang represent Gabon. And next man realize him have Gabonese roots and him say, wait, the Gabon me I got to play for. And you see the team start build up. But most men just start shun them own nation now. And I say, all right, me I go for the glory. Probably if I play for England, I know say, boy, England can, can keep me upon the particular, sustain me upon the level. Yeah. And then upon top of it, most of these players already, them, them, them already are millionaires too, you know. So the part that too, I will be angry for Yeah, I'm already a millionaire, you know. So if you represent your nation, nation and try to build up or try to develop the thing too. But it's not a one way street when we look on it from the other side. Okay? Yeah, a man can't develop can't... a nation, it's a government. <laughs> no, but even so, we got we to gotta, uh, think about the consequences too. If they do go to play for their uh, nation in regards to the, the leagues that they're in and the, 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 the links that they have, you know? So it's a complicated situation. And I just, as you mentioned, it is unfair for to ask athletes and ent entertainers to make that uh, political stand. Reggae artist is a little different because you're talking about politics all day. So that's a different, that's a different argument. But for the athlete, it is unfair to ask them to make that political stand because that's what they're doing. They're making a tremendous sacrifice and almost risking their livelihood and and future because what if they do get hurt playing for their particular team? They can't go back to their uh, league in Europe and all that type of vibe. So it's a complicated thing. But well, I'm very thankful that you picked this topic because it highlights the the grip the hand that neocolonialism still has on these cultures and countries and different factors how it raises its head if you really pay attention to what's going on on the world stage for the soccer vibe we give thanks for everyone tuned in supporting the thing from those times till now make sure you support far right ep there disrupting the status quo i want to tell you mesh marina documentary on the heights short and sweet we are trying to master this whole for a real talk i'm really trying to master this whole six seven minute short documentary vibe we have more stuff coming to you um i'm not gonna let you know the topics but we're trying to set it up that we have one coming every month but this one is very informative very entertaining will be soon if you want to hear some sweet reggae music tune in wloi.org every sunday from 9 to 11 a.m wednesdays 8 to 10 and thursdays 10 to noon yours truly junior aka the ball has spinning roots rock reggae music till next time we give thanks. Well, let me hear you say, Mount.